There are many misconceptions about a GPS dozer or machine control in general. So in this video, I'm going to clear a bunch of those up and I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. I think most people make assumptions because they hear, oh, it has an auto button and they assume the dozer does everything for you. It doesn't work like that. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what machine control is, how it works. Let's start with my favorite misconception that a GPS dozer does everything for you. I think people hear that it has an auto button, it's right here, and it does everything for you. So let's start there. I'm gonna show you exactly why that is false. This right here is the auto button. You turn that on and it goes into auto. Yes, it does control the hydraulics, but it's very limited to what it actually does. So let's get started. Here's the control box. Here's the auto switch. So if the auto switch does everything for you, I want to test that out. Start her up. There you go. Okay, so first thing, I'm in the dozer, I got it going. Uh, park brake, throttle. Let's turn on the auto button, see what happens. see it doing anything. Let's try something else. Oh, it looks like I'm not on design. So let's go on the design and see if it does everything for me. So I'm still in auto. I'm look there, look there, it's in auto. I'm gonna drive ahead and I'm gonna see if it does everything for me. Go to where there's some cut and we'll see what the auto button does then. Turn it off. doing anything what the dozer is doing right now which I'll show you I began with my blade down pushing and the dozer doesn't know what's going on it doesn't know the train that it's on or around so I'm going ahead and the blade isn't lifting it just keeps digging That's not really working. So let's change to the other view and you'll see what I mean. Okay, I got dirt on that side, dirt on that side. There's my screen. I'm in auto, let's push. Let's downshift. Not doing anything. Why won't it work? 
thought it was supposed to do everything for me. Okay, well that didn't work. So, we done two tests. We done one in the fill, we done one in the cut. With the dozer on auto. It didn't do anything. Here's why it didn't do anything. So, the dozer only knows where it is within the world, I guess, due to its elevation and its exact location and where it is within this design for the site. It knows where the plate is in relation to the design grade where it's supposed to be, but the dozer doesn't know where it actually is or what's around it. It doesn't know that I have cut here and I have fill over there. It only tells you where grade is supposed to be. Therefore, it's up to the operator to look around, use their head and be like, okay, I have cut here, I have fill there going to use this to make that happen so I don't need grade stakes. So with that you need a dozer operator who knows grades and elevations and can actually move dirt. So it's not true that the auto button does everything for you. You have to know how to take different cuts, where to put which dirt where. It's quite a complex process. But the point that I'm trying to get across is you can't just hop in the GPS dozer, flip on the auto button, and it does everything for you. The dozer doesn't know the ground or terrain around it. For it to know that, you would have to do a scan of the entire site with LiDAR or something. Compare that to this design and then it would know until it starts moving dirt. After every push, you would have to do a rescan of the entire site to keep track of what dirt is getting pushed where. That or the dozer would have to keep track of it somehow And I think we're a long ways away from that happening. So the other misconception is that machine control is going to take away jobs. I don't know if it'll ever be that advanced where you don't need an operator to look around to see what we need in the real world and what we need as a final design. There's a bunch of different things that come into play. You get soft spots, you get rain, you get other machines working around you. The list is endless. Now I'm gonna show you what auto does and how to use it. Okay, so over here, I have this to grade. The hole took some cut out. He left it a little bit high, so I have something to trim. So now, let's use auto, and I'll explain. So there's a bit for me to trim, 
So now I can use auto. I have my auto set to kick in at 15 cents. If I'm above or below that, the auto won't work. What you want to do is have enough cut left over where your dozer can push or power through it. If it's too much, you won't push very far and the dozer will just spin out. So you want to have the perfect amount that the dozer can cut right to gray. So now, let's use auto. Turn on the switch. I'm going to do those no hands. Drive forward. switch on and off. All I gotta do is lower the blade within that 15 cent range and it'll kick back in. There, so now it's in. Let's go ahead again. No hands. Now we cut that past two grades. down keeping the elevation of the cutting edge right on gray. It'll also do the tilt. However, it will not do the angle. You have to do that yourself. It doesn't know where dirt is. It doesn't know if it made windrows of dirt. It doesn't know any of that. So that's up to the operator to figure out. Another misconception is that a new operator who's never ran a dozer can, can run this and build entire site to grade. That is absolutely false. There are many things that you have to know. Now, seeing as the dozer doesn't know where the dirt is in the real world, the operator has to figure that out and you need an operator who can manage your dirt. You don't want to have too much dirt in one area pushed and not enough in the other. So you need someone who can think and has experience with grades and filling and everything you need to know basically. But the biggest thing is how to manage your dirt properly. I can't stress that enough. Even a good dozer operator, they may not make it as a GPS operator because it's all about how you manage your dirt. That will make you efficient or that will make a disaster. With this control box, you have to know a lot about it. So someone who's never used it, they're not going to know what to do. You have different designs, you may have a base station. I have this one set up on a cell network, fan net. So there's different grades, there's different elevations. You may have to undercut spots. You have to raise or lower grades depending on what you're building. You have different pitches, slopes, you have design, you have outside design. You have to know how to build a shoulder using the blade so on a gps dozer blade you can pick the point where it takes grade from you have to know how to do that you have to know how to select even the right surface that you're trying to build on some sites you might have 10 different surfaces for the one project 
Now a big thing about being a GPS operator, which is the tricky part, is knowing when everything is working correctly. For example, if you're running off a base station and the surveyor a few blocks away has a base on the same channel as your base that you're using, let's say he's a meter higher or his base is a meter higher than your base and you're now running off of his base. Your design is going to look like it's working properly but all the grades will be a meter higher than what they're actually supposed to be. If you build, I'm doing a pond right now, if you didn't know that you're going off another person's base on your first day and you start to dig and build the whole pond, at the end when you think you're finished, it's going to be a meter high. That I don't think I have to explain how much that costs to go back and redo everything. That is an absolutely huge disaster. Another misconception is that you can fill an area right to grade. That is false. If you push piles in auto and you're trying to achieve grade, the way that the dirt falls off the blade it goes below grade. Not just that, once you pack the dirt, you have to account for the volume loss, the compaction of the dirt. You'll be even lower below grade once that happens. So yes, you have to overbuild, not too much. Your dozer has to power through it. I suggest five cents depending on the material and the dozer. You want to overbuild it and then you want to pack it and then you want to do your final trim now you don't want to wait too long to do your final trim because you're going to have excess dirt that you're going to have to put somewhere so when you start i would start in the section and have a place to push your dirt which would be a fill area where you could lose that dirt if not when you do your final trim somewhere on the project you might have several of them you'll have giant piles of dirt from your trimmings you have to do it this way so when the dozer cuts the ground it's hard there's no volume loss and there's no dirt falling below the cutting edge it has to be a hard surface if you don't do it like that it will not be in grade you can't just drive around in auto and everything's going to be bang on grade it's a lot more complex than that and it takes many many years to learn all the little tricks and and stuff to make it easy and productive now a lot of people once they get good on a gps dozer they can basically replace a surveyor 